All right, today we're going to unpack a bit of a tech detective story. It's all about that sinking feeling you get when a server you absolutely trust, one you just updated, suddenly goes completely dark on the network. We're not talking about a simple crash here. This is something way more mysterious. And it really all starts with this feeling, doesn't it? It's not the sound of fans spinning down. It's digital silence. Your SSH session just freezes mid-command. The web dashboard just sits there spinning forever. And you realize you're totally, completely cut off. For anyone out there who runs their own hardware, this is a uniquely baffling and frustrating kind of quiet. So first, let's set the scene for our little mystery. This is all about what happens when a totally routine upgrade goes sideways in the most unexpected way possible. So here's the timeline. It all kicks off with an upgrade to Proxmox 9.0, which, you know, is a super popular and powerful virtualization platform. For the first 48 hours, everything was perfect. I mean, things were faster, smoother. It was all just humming along beautifully. And then, on day three, with absolutely zero warning, the connection just died. A complete and total network traffic stoppage. Now, what's so weird about this is that the server hadn't actually crashed. The power was still on, fans were spinning, the OS was technically still running, but it was completely isolated, like a digital island. It couldn't send or receive a single byte of data. It was online, but utterly alone. Okay, so what's your first instinct? The classic turn it off and on again, right? But when a simple reboot didn't actually fix the problem for good, that's when the real investigation had to begin. And let me tell you, those initial troubleshooting steps were just maddening. A hard reboot would bring the server back, sure, but the problem would always come back. And when you check the system services, the server would just confidently report, but everything was fine, all systems green even while it was completely failing. That's when you know you're not dealing with some simple glitch. And this is where a really, truly bizarre clue popped up. By running a command to restart the main networking service, the host server itself, the Proxmox dashboard, would suddenly come back online. You could connect to it again. But, and this is the crazy part, all the virtual machines and containers running on it were still totally stranded, just trapped in a digital void, unable to talk to the network at all. This is just the perfect analogy for what was happening. The system's own monitoring tools, its own map, kept insisting that everything was normal. All the services were running, the configuration was cracked, but in reality, there was zero function. The digital car was just sitting there, dead on the highway. So after hitting all these dead ends, there was really only one place left to look for the truth, the system's journal. You know, the deep, detailed logs of everything the kernel is thinking and doing. And wouldn't you know it, that's where the critical clue was hiding. And the logs didn't just have some subtle hint. Oh, no. They weren't just showing a few errors. They were flooded. I mean, absolutely screaming with a single repeating cry for help over and over and over again. And there it is. The smoking gun. Detected hardware unit hang. I mean, that sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, right? Right before the ship's computer shuts down for good? Well, in the Linux world, it's just as serious. It means the physical network card has totally stopped listening to the software. The OS is shouting commands and the hardware is just staring at the wall. So now we know what happened, a hardware hang, but we need to understand why. And the answer involves a component that for like over a decade was supposed to be the single most reliable, foolproof part of any server build. The villain of our story, believe it or not, is the E1000E driver. This is the piece of software that lets Linux talk to some of the most common and trusted Intel gigabit network cards on the entire planet. For years, the advice was simple. If you want stability, you buy Intel. They just work. Or, well, they used to. And this just perfectly illustrates the core conflict here. On one side, you've got the whole promise of Intel networking, the gold standard, the set it and forget it component you never have to think about. And on the other side, you have the new reality with Proxmox 9.0 and its modern Linux kernel, where this trusted hardware is now the very source of all the instability. So the crucial point is this, the network card isn't physically broken. If you were to roll back to an older version of the software, it would probably work perfectly for another five years. This is a communication breakdown. It's a software-defined failure. The new kernel is basically speaking a dialect that the older driver, and by extension the hardware, just can't keep up with anymore. So how do you fix a problem where your most trusted piece of hardware basically betrays you? And what's the bigger lesson here for any of us running our own servers, labs, or critical infrastructure at home? The immediate fix 
and I'm going to stress the word temporary here, involves running this command directly on the server. This command tells the network card, ENO1, to turn off a couple of features called TSO and GSO. But what does that actually mean? TSO, or TCP Segmentation Offload, is a performance feature. It lets the network card do some of the heavy lifting when it comes to organizing data packets, which frees up your main CPU to do other, more important things. It's supposed to make everything more efficient, but in this specific clash between the new kernel and the old driver, this very feature is the trigger that causes the card to just hang. Disabling it is kind of like putting a governor on an engine just to keep it from shaking itself to pieces. And this really brings us to the big takeaway from this whole mess. First off, even the most reliable old school hardware has a software expiration date. Software just keeps moving on. Second, a major update can turn a component you trust into your biggest liability overnight. Third, that little one-off glitch you rebooted away? Yeah, it's almost always a warning sign of a much deeper bug. And finally, maybe the most important lesson of all, your logs hold the answers. Don't just reboot and hope for the best. You gotta dig in and find the truth. Ultimately, the cost of a failure like this isn't just about the technical troubleshooting or the hours you spend staring at a command line. It's about losing trust in your own system. It's that nagging feeling that the stable machine you built is now just a ticking time bomb. And so this whole experience leaves us with one last kind of provocative question to think about for our own projects. We all have that one piece of hardware or software we think is absolutely bulletproof. But in a world of constant updates, maybe it's time to ask ourselves, what trusted part of your setup could be the next to go silent? <laughs>